Good morning and thank you for joining us today at the virtual open house of the United Nations Global Compact. We appreciate you for taking time out to join us today. I want to say a very big thank you. Um, we will just be apologies once again for um, starting off a bit behind schedule, just understanding the technical issues that can sometimes happen with technology. Um, we would ask every one of you, please, to write the name, um, your name and the organization that you represent um, so that we can properly identify you so that the call is not spammed. Um, by way of introduction, my name is Tumi Onamade. I'm the Senior Participant um, Engagement and Programs Manager for the UN Global Compact here in Nigeria. We also have on the call Aminata Diawra, uh, Engagement Coordinator, Asia, Middle East and Africa for the United Nations Global Compact. And also on the call is Anna Chire, Support Coordinator, Participant Engagement, Middle East and Africa for the United Nations Global Compact. We'll, uh, further down the program, we'll be having um, an organization that is a participant of the UN Global Compact, has been on for over 10 years, which is Zenit Bank PLC. And we have Ungochi Uweke, who will be representing the organization to tell you more from her point of view of how the engagement has been and the benefits they've reaped from the engagement of um, the UN Global Compact. So without much further ado, uh, I'll please just, I'll please just um, request that if you're not speaking, do have your mic, your mic muted, and we wouldn't want any disruptions um, during the course of the session. So thank you once again for joining us. Um, we're going right into it. So just going through the agenda today, um, I've done the welcome and the introductions. Then we'll be going to the webinar norms. Then we'll be speaking to the business value of sustainability and what you stand to gain from engaging with the UN Global Compact. Ngochi Weke will be sharing an impact story and you will then get more um, participant benefits. When you do join the UN Global Compact, we'll be sharing more on what you stand to gain. If you have any questions, please, you can jot them down or put them in the chat box. Um, we have a section allocated to the Q&A um, and we hope to answer every question that you might have and then we call it a day. So um, I'll hand it over to Aminata Diawara um, to continue with the presentation. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Fine. Thank you so much for joining our open house today. My name is Aminata Diawara. As Tumi has, my colleague Tumi has already introduced me. I'm an engagement coordinator at UN Global Compact in the New York office. And we have worked closely with Tumi, Anna, who is also on the call today. So I'm gonna move forward. Like without any further ado, I'm gonna move forward. So one of the key ways to get most from our time together today is to be curious and open. Being curious and open-minded help us to create room for new learning, especially for some topic area that might be new to you. And if these topics are now new to you, we encourage you as an individual and the organization that you, repre that you represent to continue <laughs> to develop because you hold the key to the future. What we do today determine the kind of world we will live in tomorrow and the kind of world our future generation will live in. If you have any question, please write them in the Q&A box. We will attempt to answer all the questions we receive. Just before I hand it over to my colleague, um, Anna, who will, be, who will be presenting the business value of sustainability. We are, quick, we are very quickly ongoing going to take a poll so please um can you move to that polling section to me please okay so i've just gotten um uh, i've just gotten information that there's been some technical issues with the poll so we'll move right along okay sure no problem so slide five, please. Let's start with our story, um, how we got where we are today. We have a short video for you where you can, uh, we will play about the story, our story, how we begin and everything. Um, slide six, please. <clears throat> OK, 
can you hear the video? I think I'm not hearing it. Initiate a global compact of shared values and principles. Twenty-one years ago, a small group of United Nations and business leaders came up with a visionary proposal. I propose that you, the business leaders here gathered in Davos, and we, the United Nations, initiate a global compact of shared values and principles which will give a human face to the global market. The mission of the United Nations Global Compact is to mobilize companies around the world to align their operations and strategies with 10 universal principles in the areas of human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. The UN represents the body that aims to drive international cooperation and drive peace and security for humanity. And I think it unifies all of society around this set of 17 goals. With more than 17,000 companies and 3,800 non-business signatories based in over 160 countries with more than 60 local networks, the UN Global Compact is the world's largest corporate sustainability initiative. Our ambition is to accelerate and scale the global collective impact of business by upholding the 10 principles and delivering the sustainable development goals through accountable companies and ecosystems that enable change. With the UN Global Compact, participating companies achieve sustainable value by delivering measurable impact to the world's most pressing challenges. Specifically, we enable participating companies to drive impact on specific goals, bringing innovative solutions for a sustainable future, scale ambitious action through our local networks and global multi-stakeholder network, make measurable progress and communicate through a trusted reporting framework. We are working across a variety of focus areas where business can have an outsized effect on outcomes, anti-corruption, climate change, human rights, labor and decent work, gender equality, SDG integration, and transformational governance. Our multi-stakeholder coalitions scale ambitious action to deliver on the Sustainable Development Goals, CEO Water Mandate, CFO Coalition for the SDGs, Ocean Stewardship Coalition, Africa Business Leaders Coalition, Science-Based Targets Initiative, Our think labs shape thought leadership on critical sustainability issues and continuous performance improvement. They help define UN global compact thinking, curate best practices, and develop knowledge, guidance, and tools that empower business sector action on urgent topics. All companies, whatever size, sector, or geographic location can contribute. Wherever you are on your sustainability journey, you will find engagement opportunities to help you make progress. Connect with industry, experts, peers, and with the UN at the global and national level. Learn, gain knowledge and skills to make progress and deliver impact through tools and resources. The UN Global Compact Academy Learning Platform, peer learning groups, and accelerators. Lead by showing bold leadership and inspiring others and leverage your position and advocate for major impact through our policy advocacy and call to action campaigns. Communicate measurable progress towards your sustainability goals and targets and build trust and credibility through our communication on progress and get recognized for your sustainability efforts. Companies' ESG performance is increasingly important to a range of stakeholders. Today, consumers are choosing to buy from sustainable companies. 83% of consumers think companies should be actively shaping sustainability best practices. Employees prefer to work for sustainable companies. On average, 84% of employees are more likely to work for companies that share their values across the various elements of ESG. Investors are raising expectations. 
88% of investors believe companies that prioritize sustainability represent better opportunities for long-term returns than companies who do not. Embedding sustainability in your company's strategy and practice drives and improves business performance and growth. Research shows sustainable companies perform better. They have been shown to have stronger brand reputation and revenue growth, higher margin premiums, higher market valuations and stock price performance, and stronger risk mitigation. Any business that continues to operate under its own self-interest will not be around very long. So businesses that have a strong purpose, that understand how they can make society better, will be embraced by society and will be around for Do it, we need to do it together. Collaboration, north, south, east, west, you know, black, brown, white, strengthen the diversity of the human family is what we need right now to get us past this incredibly difficult time. Might sound like it's impossible, but you know, that's what we work towards, making the um, impossible possible. Join this movement of committed companies around the globe to deliver measurable impact on the world's most pressing challenges. Join the UN Global Compact today and deliver impact where it matters. Okay, thank you so much for listening to our story. We hope you enjoy it. And I'm going to hand it over to my, my colleague, Anna, who's here with us today for the next part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you Anna, so much. You. Thanks, Aminata. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you to me for the warm welcome. To reiterate, my name is Hannah Shray, and I'm the support coordinator for our participant engagement team based in New York um, with a regional focus in Africa. So I very much look forward to this session and you know, for any questions you might have, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Otherwise we will certainly have um, some time allocated for it at the end of this session. So taking into account this important background on the founding of the UN Global Compact, we are based in a position to enable companies of all sizes and sectors around the world to contribute. And we do this through a principle-based approach. Upon creation of the UN Global Compact, a set of principles or values um, would form the basis upon which responsible businesses operate. And specifically, we derived 10 principles from various UN declarations and conventions to guide companies to conduct business in the most responsible manner. These 10 principles cover four core areas, which you can see here on the left side of the screen. Namely, these are human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. And they are truly the heart of the UN Global Compact. Every participating company commits to embedding these principles in their business strategy and operations. There are common ethical and practical framework for operationalizing corporate responsibility, and they do represent the fundamental values that businesses should embed in their daily strategies. In addition, which you'll be able to see on the right side of the screen, we have mandate to deliver on the 17 sustainable development goals. And these are a set of goals that articulate clearly what it is that we mean by the world that we all want and really a blueprint for a better future. They represent more aspirational and long-term targets for businesses and other stakeholders to be able to work together towards creating a more sustainable and equitable world. Working in a valued and principled way towards a set of ambitious goals is the way that we can together uh, deliver the world that we all want. And the UN Global Compact works with companies like all of you to really embed these principles of the UN Global Compact towards the larger targets, such as the sustainable development goals. And we can move to the next slide, please. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so with the UN Global Compact, participating companies achieve sustainable value by delivering measurable impact to the world's most pressing challenges. Uh, as you can see, we do this in three ways uh, that actually all connect to these four overarching core areas that I just mentioned, as well as the 17 sustainable development goals. 
first among these three pillars is um, that we enable companies to drive impact on specific goals where business has an outsized effect on outcomes. Second of all, with the UN Global Compact, companies of all sizes, geographies, sectors, across value chains, and through entire ecosystems can contribute and scale and ambitious action to deliver these goals. And third amongst these is that companies can make measurable progress and communicate it through a trusted reporting system. Uh, this is possible actually through our uh, communication on progress, which is a public platform to which all participating companies are required to communicate their progress on an annual basis. And this is actually a very effective way uh, for businesses to build trust and credibility through a public platform on your company's sustainability efforts where you're able to uh, publicly report and, and benchmark your progress. And we'll go through these pillars uh, step by step. I think, sorry, Anna, to interrupt. Sorry, everyone. I think the slides start showing because we kind of have some technical issue again. Sorry about everything happening here. So we will resume sharing it. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, can everyone see the slides now? Yeah, it's fine. Anna, you can okay, great. Ahead. Apologies for any technical difficulties, but we can actually move on to the next slide. This is just kind of a general overview of those three pillars to which we um, enact our business strategy. But the first amongst those three is driving impact on specific goals. And to drive impact on these goals, we've identified seven focus areas where the business community can have a really strong impact. And we've designed actually a portfolio of initiatives to help you address and deliver on them. So these seven uh, focus areas include human rights, labor and decent work, climate change, anti-corruption, which, as you might remember from the previous slides, really makes up those four core areas of our 10 principles. In addition, we have um, gender equality, uh, SDG integration, which is really just how to integrate the SDGs across your business and how to use them uh, for more innovative purposes. And then lastly, transformational governance. So all in all, it's really a scale model and we're able to implement um, you know, these core areas and, and really address the most pressing challenges. Um, and that's with that, I'll hand it back over to my colleague, Tumi, to continue on these other um, pillars. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, I think with this, we've been able to lay the background and I just wanna to reiterate to everyone that please um, write your names or rename yourselves with your name and the organization that you represent. So we'll be able to track everyone and ensure that the call is not spammed. Alongside, if you have any questions, please do write your questions in the Q&A box. And it's interesting because while the video was um, playing, I had a, there was, there was a particular, um, there was a particular presentation or picture in the in the video where there was like a picture of a refinery and it just bumped to me because I know that every Nigerian today is having discussions around um, the new ref Dangote refinery that was launched. But just after that video, um, or just after that particular picture of the of the video, there was also a very wide mass of um, solar panels, and then it just it's just for us, it just spurred a thought in my head that in as much as we're looking for economic growth and development, um, the real essence of sustainability is how we transition and do our business more sustainably. As at today, what we may be able to achieve or what we may be able to start from might be a refinery, but then how is your business also setting, a, how are you setting up your business in a way that you're transitioning to other renewable forms of energy or sustainable forms of energy. Yes, that conversation has very much started in Nigeria and it's a very good opportunity for you to strategically place your organization in such, um, in such sphere of also in terms of energy, human rights, labor, environment matters, transformational governance, um, anti-corruption, uh, so many different areas that um, are very crucial to the sustainability of a business. So going straight into how you can scale um, ambitious action, just like Anna mentioned, all companies, regardless of size, sector, and um, geographic location can contribute to this. And worldwide, like you would have seen from the video, we have over 
um, 18,000 businesses that are participants and over 3,800 non-businesses working together to ensure sustainability. Now, wherever you are on your um, sustainability journey, you will find engagement opportunities to help you accelerate progress. Now, with the UN Global Compact, you can connect with industry peers, you can um, engage with the UN at the global and the national level. We do have a lot of events um, at the global level and the regional level as well, speaking to Africa and the, and the local level being Nigeria. You can also connect with industry experts. Um, a very crucial point when it comes to sustainability is capacity development. You've been um, improving in your skills and technical knowledge that um, you have and how you can properly embed sustainability into your organization. So there's, there's that opportunity to connect with industry peers, um, industry experts and peers, um, and also with the UN at the global level, national level and regional level, like I said. You would also have the opportunity to gain knowledge and skills to make progress that deliver impact, right? Um, and then you'll be able to lead, show bold leadership and inspire others um, leverage your position and, and advocate for major impact. And the point where um, I like to draw an insight from LEAD is there's an organization, Sterling Bank PLC, who is also a participant of the UN Global Compact. And um, recently I, I came across uh, a write up or a picture of their head office in Marina Lagos. And that head office is being transitioned to be totally off grid. I don't know the capacity of um, employees they have in that company. I want to believe it's about a 22 story building completely being powered by solar. There's a lot of opportunities. If you look at the climate um, issues, they're very much prevalent in our environment this day. In Nigeria, it's the rainy season. Um, Lagos is very much hit. Um, there are many more states in Nigeria that are very much hit. But then if you look at it, it is our actions um, that are contributing to this, 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 um, these things, these negative things that are happening. What can we do to curb the activity and what can we do in our own little space, um, be you an SME, a micro organization or a large corporation as well um, in terms of addressing these issues and moving to sustainable me uh, measures. So just in that action that Solar, um, that Sterling Bank has done to transition that one, one building to solar, totally going off grid, definitely will spur many other organizations to act that same way. And that's where you see the lead part comes into, into play. Then you would also see that you can communicate just like Anna mentioned, it helps to build trust, credibility, because when you communicate your progress, you're able to um, towards your, communicate your progress towards your sustainability goals and targets. That builds progress with your investors, your customers, and the environment at large. Now, like I mentioned, whatever size of company, um, you can definitely contribute. Um, whatever stage of sustainability maturity, we can definitely help you. So be you um, a learner, be you mid-level or very much advanced. If you're advanced, one core thing for me is that we want to put Nigerian companies on the floor on what is it that Nigerian companies are doing when it comes to sustainability. With Yes, there are challenges, there are minimal resources, but there are a lot of success stories that we want to put out there um, for Nigerian companies. And that's one that's really one of my um, concerns. Now, um, just like I mentioned, you can connect, you can learn, you can lead, but this is through a portfolio of engagement opportunities and um, delivered globally, delivered regionally, being Africa, and then locally being Nigeria. Um, you connect through our events. Um, connect with the academy and the kind of academy is very, very useful because for each organization that joins all the staff, I mean the entire staff of an organization. So if you have a 5,000 um, staff base, have access to the academy and um, it has many sessions, many on-demand sessions, um, trainings, reports, guidelines that you can take advantage of on how to actually embed sustainability into your organization. And when I say sustainability, it's not just, um, it's not just, it might seem like a, a big umbrella word, but we're talking about things like good labor standards. I'm talking about things like anti-corruption, transformational governance, ocean health, 
um, energy, gender equality is a very key um, factor, especially in Nigeria today, Africa and the world. Um, we're talking about ethics, we're talking about integrity, talking about climate action, um, talking about decent work, clean water, um, it's 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 a lot, and we're able to help you whichever focused area you, you decide to um, engage in. Now, a lot of this, the academy is really really useful. It helps um, participants to engage mm -hmm. and make use of tools, guidelines. There are benchmarking tools that you can just impute um, details from your organization. It will help you to give you data on what it is you need to do to move forward, where you are currently. Um, and all this is only available to participants. We also have what we call peer learning groups. Now peer learning groups are delivered regionally, locally, and globally. And it's for companies to learn from each other. Um, I like to say that the UN Global Compact is not a policing dog. We are not here to tell you this is what it is and you have to abide it by it. We're not regulators, right? Um, we're here, we are more like a guiding dog to show you this is the, path you need to follow and how and show you how to achieve the targets that you want to um, achieve. Now, the peer learning groups is very unique because you can learn from other companies and not just Nigerian companies, from other um, companies across the world. So you could be having peer learning groups on a particular thematic issue, let's say it's human rights issues with another company in India, or another company in, um, in China, or another company in Japan, or another company in Spain. So that exchange of knowledge is usually very helpful from experience with our companies who engage with this on learning on what are the insights, what are the things I can learn um, from other companies that are way ahead um, in other parts of the world. And also, what can other companies learn from Nigerian companies? Because Nigerian companies are very resilient and when it comes to the issue that we face, um, what can they learn from us? And that's why we also want not just you to learn, but also share the success stories of um, Nigerian organizations. Um, so for example, the peer learning groups, we have peer learning groups on forced labor, um, discrimination, climate adaptation, um, 10 principles of, the, of SME. So if you are um, an SME, that's very, very crucial to your growth as well and how you can scale your business, but still embed sustainability in it. We also have accelerator programs. And for me, this is, you can imagine the amount of work that has gone into accelerator programs. They run for about six months and it's almost like um, doing a two to three year course in Harvard. So I say Harvard because Harvard is highly rated, but this is very wholesome um, programs that we run for organizations. So an organization this year or for a couple of years might be very focused on addressing gender issues um, in the company. So we run this program for about six to, of these programs for about six months. You can participate in it. It takes you through proper guidelines, um, broken down um, information on how to scale that particular subject matter. I say gender, we also have um, an accelerator on climate. We also have an accelerator on um, SDG ambitions. We also have one that we call um, SDG innovation program. And I'd like to speak on the SDG innovation program, but it's very insightful. We ran that in 2021 and we had a mix of companies, big companies, small companies, a lot of the um, representatives that um, represented the organization in this program actually had ideas that they were thinking about just at the corner of their desk. But then this program helped them to put, around, put together a business plan around it and embed sustainability to it. Because if you're seeking investments from banks or seeking um, loans or grants, a criteria that a bank of industry would give you was the sustainability bit to it a criteria that um, any other commercial bank would want to, um, would request is what are the sustainability bits to it. So we helped them, the, the, tr the program helped them shape that business proposal for confidentiality, confidentiality, confi um, confidentiality reasons, I beg your pardon, I'm not able to disclose the program, um, but this is something that is very much going to come to light soon. Um, and it was a very ingenious idea of what they could address in the environment. So making more profits for the business, but also addressing societal issues. Um, very recently for people who are um, at best, Oando recently launched 
um, electric vehicles that would be running on the mass transit for Lagos State. Owando PLC is also participants of the UN Global Compact. And these are one of the ideas that we, well, they have the idea, but we then help them shape it better on how to um, develop their sustainability ideas, make more money for business, ease life for people, ease life for the society, but also address sustainability um, issues. Now, it might seem like this conversation is solely for working level, but for CEOs of companies, C-suits, we also usually have policy um, advocacy and campaigns where um, the leaders of companies can lead the agenda um, and call to actions. Um, on the video, you would have seen some of our call to action um, programs, but we'll get to that in a bit, where CEOs can lead that um, change, um, decide to be a champion for gender in Nigeria, decide to be a champion for forced labor, for discrimination, um, for SDG bonds, clean water, whatever it is, and be a champion for that um, in Nigeria. Then lastly, we also have what we call Think Labs, and they're like a small multi-sectorial group. Um, who shape thought leadership because the truth about it is nobody knows it best nobody knows it perfect the issues that we face today um, are new um, no everybody is trying to prefer solutions so the think labs are where organi um, organ representatives from organizations come together into sectoral groups and then discuss on how they can address real issues right so issues like living wage the just transition to ensure the shift to green jobs, um, deliver zero carbon, decent jobs, uh, women's entrepreneurship today, you'll see that many of the commercial banks have funding they have received from international funders and have women-focused loans. That's, an, that's a sustainability idea um, that was, that, was um, ad, that the banks decided to develop to address sustainability issues when it comes to women's entrepreneurship. Women's procurement is another um, area. Um, so just talking about this many things that you're able to engage from. Um, think labs are usually think labs are usually invitation only. Um, are usually very, very the process to actually have um, organizations join is usually very, very tight. And we usually have a lot of organizations scrabbling to partake into think labs. So um this are some of the coalitions. When I was speaking to the C suits leading on some of the um, coalitions or C level um, projects that we have, so um, we work with companies and partners in a, I'll call it like a multi stakeholder coalition to deliver the SDGs. Now, for example, the first one you see is the CEO Water Mandate, and that's targeted at improving outcomes for 3 billion people in over. 100 basins, I'm um, representing a scale target. Now, if you want to think back, I, I, I want to believe that um, most people on this call um, are Nigerians. And sometime in secondary school, we would have stumbled up upon um, the Ogo River Basin. I think if you can't remember, I just want to rejig your memory. But the truth about it is a lot of companies are tapping resources from the Ogo River Basin to the disadvantage of the communities that are there. And then sooner or later, Ogun River Basin might run dry. So how do we want to address this issue? How do we want to um, make sure that we don't deplete our resources and we're making sure that we are not also damaging the resources that we are, um, um, that we are tapping from? So that's just one mm -hmm. idea um, of the CEO Water Mandate. We also have what we call ocean stewardship and um, science-based targets. They are targeting scale initiative across oceans and climate emissions goals. And the climate emission is, as a small company, are you using diesel power generators or are you using solar um, electricity? If you wanna switch to solar electricity, there are ways that you can attract funding to your business to transition to such, um, to such um, electricity generation for your company. If you're a large company, a lot of companies these days are switching to gas-powered um, electricity. We also have um, the CEO Coalition, which is a group of large companies um, to scale their corporate finance, which has a scale, a scale target of about 100, 1,000 companies that beg your pardon to join, and 50% um, of the corporate investment to be SDG-linked. 
through various financial instruments. Now, this would be a target of about $500 billion, um, all representing si real significant impacts and we can make together. So this is just a snapshot of um, a snapshot of what is available that you can tap in from BU and SME or a large company. Now, um, from the video and what Hannah shared, you're able to communicate your progress. And it's very essential that you do that because you want to get the trust of investment or investors, get the trust of um, organizations that you might be looking to um, attract funding from and also the society. Now you're able to make measurable progress and communicate it through what we call a communication of progress, which is publicly available. It's a digital platform with uh, mandatory and voluntary questions, um, enabling companies to communicate performance, track and measure progress and continuously improve. Like I said, we're not a policing dog. We are here to guide you. Now this um, public database is open to stakeholders for transparency and benchmarking and comparison. It helps companies at every step of the way um, with dedicated resources, relevant initiatives, and targeted supports from the global compacts at the global level, the regional level, and um, the local level as well. So I hope I've been able to give a snapshot of what you're able to benefit from the UN Global Compact. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat box. I will address them um, towards the end of the session. Right now, I want to confirm that we have, um, I mentioned earlier that we'll be having an impact story from one of our participants, the Zenith Bank PLC. I want to confirm if she's on the call. Ugochi, um, can you please just confirm that you're on the call? Yes, I am. Great, great. So um, I'll just hand it over to Ngochi Oweke, who's the Corporate Sustainability and Responsibility ESG HSC Manager for Zenibank PLC, just to give us an insight into um, what she has seen are the benefits of engaging with the UN Global Compact um, to her individually and also to the organization. Over to you, Gucci. Okay, hello. Yes, we can, can hear you. Me? Yes, okay. thank you. Yes, Mm. Yes, we can see you, but no longer. I think your video is off. You can you see me now? Yes, perfect. So let me pick the call, please. Okay. Um, good morning. Was it in the morning? So good morning. Yes, good morning. Um, thank you for um inviting me to speak today. Okay. Um, the park has been a member of the UNDC now for close to six to seven years, and um, before I took over. Um, this particular fix, I had my predecessors, um, Eunice Samson, as well as Joy Pachapan, who you also were active in UNGC. Um, for us as an institution, UNGC has provided us with a um, lot of tools. And in the early years, we had a lot of training, um, a lot of trainings that, because we were starting off our sustainability journey, you know, with little or no information. We we're trying to build our own um, principles, or not, not just principles, our own benchmark, our own checks of things we wanted to, you know, um, focus on. We need to look at the things that are material to our own organization, being a financial institution. And there was so much information out there, and we needed something, tools to kind of guide us in the process. So the UNGC provided a lot of tools for us. In the early stage, we had a lot of trainings, and those trainings really came in handy. Because in those trainings, we also had, had opportunity of, you know, getting to um, see the tools that were available to us as an organization. We also were able to understand better the concept of materiality as a financial institution areas which we look at. We looked at the principles. We looked around the ten principles you guys work with. These are these the nine principles we have from the CBN sustainability principles. So we, we had kind of. An opportunity to check both sides and then create something that works for us within our organization. Of course, we also signed up to Unipify. We're among the first people who signed up um, to Unipify banking principles as well. Um, the good thing was that the UNDC allowed us to get management by the fact that our CEOs could be reached out to by the UNDC allowed us, you know 
have government buy which is very, very essential when you're implementing sustainability new lead an organization. If you don't have money buy in, you can't get the support you need, the resources you need to implement because it's actually a very big um responsibility when you say I want I want to go so I want to be sustainable. It's easy to say, but when it comes to implementing, you find that it's very difficult. You need to take little wins, little wins you can get. You know, you need to not tell yourself, okay, what are the quick wins I can get? You know, just to make it um what will I say, make it um look possible for the other, other people in the organization because if you start with things that are difficult people get tired and like so what's the essence of it? what are we getting out of this we can't see what we are getting so the UNGC gave us opportunity to meet other organizations who are who are differences of their journey so the shared experience also gave us an idea of okay this, this can be done this this is, this is an opportunity to you know um meet people that have different experiences similar experiences or different experiences but it gives you a better inkling of what you are getting yourself into because we are entering into sustainability knowing nothing about it and just taking a plunge but luckily we had ceo um, buy in we had tools and i would want to say that in the last seven years we have um, we haven't gotten to where we want to be, but I would dare say that we have hit some milestones, which we're actually extremely proud of. We've published um, six sustainability standalone reports in this period, in addition to have a sustainability report being our annual report. And each year, we're excited to see that we have come a little bit further than the previous years. Because we're a financial institution, uh, a lot of our activities um, also include our customers. So it does, it's not just um, looking at our own GAG emissions or our own environmental issues. We also need to look at our customers who work with us, our vendors. So we have, um, uh, what we've done is try to push sustainability by ensuring that the credit facilities we give out, we insist that customers show us evidence that environmental and social issues are considered in their own processes. And that is why for every credit facility, we insist on an assessment, an ESG assessment of the customer's operations as a prerequisite of credits. So if you are coming in for a credit, we expect that we have to see the ESG audit of your organization. In addition to that, we've also gone into financial inclusion, creating a lot of products through our retail banking to bring the unbanked into the financial system. So we have lots of retail products. And then we've also focused a lot on the woman. We've created products specifically for women. Because we have a product we call the Z woman. We were able to give female SMEs facilities at single interest rates, which has been very, very successful. And so far so good. For some reason, women seem to be very good at paying back loans. So we've actually had a very successful run with that product. So we have continued, we've been doing it and we, we, we hope to continue expanding it because the success rates have been very good. In addition to just giving them loans, we don't just give them loans, sorry. In addition, we give them trainings, we do workshops for these women. A lot of the SMEs, they want to do a business. They don't have the tools, they can't afford the tools, financial education tools, financial tools. So we offer them those services, keeping accounting, keeping records of their sales, projections and all that. So these are things that we do for our uh, SMEs and, and we've noticed that when the women who have been trained come down a year or two years, we discover that they keep better characters and their businesses seem to do a lot better and they're able to uh, assess more facilities because they have a structure in place that allows us to confidently give them more funds. And the good thing about the funds is that not only this single digit, which is rare in the financial institutions at this time, we also do not ask for collateral and because we have discovered that collection is a big issue that women have when it comes to collecting facilities from the bank. And the reason being that the, the most common collateral is landed property and houses. And because we're in a patrilineal society where a lot of women do not get access to inheriting properties from their fathers, a lot of them cannot get a facility with their own collateral. It means you have to get permission from a husband or a brother who has collateral if they even have any. And a lot of women who, who are in the SME um, spare do not even have any assets because if they had, a lot of them would have sold the assets to even raise the funds. So we opted to know what, take a plunge, trust these women, and they haven't failed us. We've been a very big uh, commitment to give 
um, a loan out in Nigerian economy without collateral, but it has been quite successful so far. They will also, we also have, of course, um, um, facilities for accounts and for older people um, who have a peculiar need because they're not e like the rest of us. And so sometimes they get lost in the modern banking system. They are more comfortable what they are used to. So we have what we call the timeless accounts for people over in retirement age. It gives an opportunity to invest their retirement funds and also to get services in a way they understand better. And we gradually also expose them to modern day um, technology when it comes to banking services, which a lot of them are very reluctant to embrace. Because you find that, you find that um, a lot of them are very distrustful of the e-banking. They don't trust it. And because of the stories of fraud they hear here, they, they want their traditional banking. So it's a big deal. So we create those um, avenues to attend to them specifically. And we, it's called like, it makes them very happy because sometimes they get lost in the crowd. You know, the youngsters, they all get lost. They get lost in the crowd and feel that they're not um, recognized anymore in society. So it's good that they have, we have created a, a program specifically for them in addition to other programs we have done for both children, for teenagers, as well as um, the, the not so literate uh, population. We also have um, accounts that you can use a very basic phone, with very little internet. You don't have to have an advanced phone for people. Some people don't have access to what you call the Android phones and so you, you want to, well, so what happens to them? Can they do transactions? Yes, they can. We have such kind of accounts for them as well. So that's what we've done in terms of financial inclusion. Uh, that was also done in terms of women empowerment. Then of course our own um, contribution to the environment. We've tried so hard to reduce our own emissions. Our branches, for instance, we run our ATMs in first seven with our solar panels. We don't use um, we don't use generators anymore. So over the weekend, just have just the solar panels running across all our 400 branches nationwide. We intend to also start running some branches actually in the northern states fully on solar since they have enough sunlight there. We're using our consumption of fossil fuel. Um, our tap heads are sensors so we don't to reduce our water consumption as well. Um, we also try very hard to you know work with our communities, stakeholder engagement, we reach out to them, we provide them resources as well, like medical centers, like they do the medical center, which was recently um, recommissioned. We built it some 10 years back, which was vandalized during the NSAS um, protest. And we've gone back, not only did we refurbish it, we upgraded it, and we gave, it, we gave them a 34 kVA solar panel that ensures they have power, constant power all through without reducing emissions and reducing their fossil fuel consumption. So I think so far so good. Um, we've come a long way. We hope of course we have a lot more milestones we're hoping to meet. But so far so good. I think our youth uh, partnership with the UNC has been extremely profitable for us in our journey and has helped us streamline um, the things we want, to learn our ideas and been able to allow us specifically select items that have as much impact as um, we wish for. And sometimes some of them have even more impact than we are looking for and we're very happy about that. Of course, we still need more collaboration. We still need uh, more tools. <laughs> you can never have enough of that. It's a journey, it's not it's a destination. So we, of course, uh, um, we want to continue collaborating with UNDC and we, we hope the partnership keeps on um, this positive project that it has so far. Uh, so thank you so much to me for the opportunity to share Zeni Bank's um, journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oguchi. Um, we do appreciate um, you taking the time to run us through um, what you term as benefits um, from the UN Global Compact. Act very quickly, I see that someone in the chat had a question for you, so I'll just throw that out um, very quickly because I know that you have another um, engagement scheduled. So the question says to you, Gochi, when you access your when you assess your customers' compliance to ESG sustainability principles for credit facilities, what are the indicators that you look out for, and uh, in the absence of customized tools from the UNGC? Okay, thank you for that question. So what we look at for basically is the customer's power source, waste management. Um, human rights, 
Well, I can look at as as he uses child labor, does he face um staff well? Is there discrimination um, along any whether by age or by gender? He wants to look at how he acquires the property. Does he have the environmental certification that is required for a particular um operation that the customer is carrying out? So those are basically the things we're looking out for. We also look at the health and safety um documentation he has in place does he have proper health and safety policy and is this implemented are his um staff protected does he have an emergency evacuation plan if something goes wrong and what does he do to ensure that his operations does not affect the community that his host community those are the things you look out for Very much well said. Thank you so much, Obuchi, for your time. We do appreciate you um, um, sharing with us um, insights into the engagement from the UN Global Compact. And we hope that you, the audience, has found it useful. Um, whatever the subject area, whatever the thematic focus your business is, maybe it's in transportation, maybe it's in exploration, oil and gas manufacturing, um, whatever sector the UNGC can definitely very much help you to um, scale that sustainability journey and the truth about it is wherever you are starting from wherever you are in terms of the journey we can definitely um, very much help you continue to move forward like Ugochi said there's no destination it's a continuous journey that we continuously have to um, progress on so very quickly, I will hand it over to my colleague, um, Anna, to proceed with the presentation. Over to you, Anna. I think that will be me. <laughs> yeah, I know we have quite limited time. Um, so Aminata, if you want to quickly run through these, then I'm happy yeah. to open up the floor to some questions and address the ones in the chat. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Anna. So <clears throat> as my colleague went through all the benefits, I know Tumi have elaborated some more benefits here, just as academy, after joining, like the benefit you can have, like we'll be able to go to our some of our events, be able to have access to the academy, be able to be part of the peer learning. So yeah, like beside all those benefits, you can after joining UN Global Compact, you have you will have also more benefits uh, to to that. So I will now share some of those benefits after you join UNGC. So all participants of the UN Global Compact get the participant profile. This is a space to be able to discuss current pra practice and showcase the initiative best practice to the business. So if, as you can see on the <clears throat> slide here, this is how the participant profile will look like. You will have the name of your company and this will be public. And then before we used to showcase the, um, the COP, the communication on progress, but now as uh, my colleague, my colleague to me mentioned now, the COP is by questionnaire, so it's now, it's publicly showcased, but now on the participant page anymore. We showcase it and digitally now. But this is how, to give you an idea, after joining, this is how your participant profile will look like. And then anyone, like all, like anyone can look for your company and then see that they're part of UN Global Compact and then see everything about your company, your like everything about your company. So this is how the participant <clears throat> profile will look like. Next slide, please. And also you can communicate your participation to the, in the UN Global Compact to your key stakeholder by using our media toolkit, which will help you amplify your sustainability story. Also, this is how that will look like. This is just an example. We, you will be able to use this toolkit and then like do your communication on social media. So this is our social media toolkit. Whenever you wanna acknowledge that you're part of UN Global Compact or you wanna talk about something about sustainability, you can use this toolkit to do that. We also provide the We Support logo, but that will be through requests. Like um, once you a participant, you can send us a request to use our We Support logo and our support team will process that. And then you can also use the We Support logo, but the We Support logo cannot be used everywhere. There's a specific place where those can be used, and we give you a guideline once you send a request to 
to use the whistleblower logo. But the social, uh, the media toolkit can be used on social media on many platforms. So this is how the media toolkit will look like, as you can see here. Next slide, please. So our recognition program acknowledged the pioneer who are individual that have made a profound impact on the STG through their business work. We want to ensure that any company inclusive of, of all shape, size, location should be able to connect, learn, lead, communicate the work that they are doing, they are doing so we can collectively work towards a set of defined goals that we will make sure to show that <clears throat> with scale we can make progress. So we have also this program called SCG Pioneer, like as uh, I mentioned here, you can be based on your performance and everything, you can apply for the program. And then if you are choose, you will come to New York, but you have to be a participant, like uh, all these, Things are, are elaborate to be part of to be part of or have access to this program. You will have to be a participant. So these are some of the benefits, and then included everything that my colleague Tumi also mentioned. So without further ado, my colleague Anna will also join you. I know there's some question about how to join. We will address those. We have a slide, like two slides on how to join. We will get to them. And then if there's any more question, please, you can put it in the chat and then we can address them at the end of the conversation. And now my colleague Anna will walk you through the how to join process. I know everyone wants yeah. to know. That. Right. Thank you Thank so you. much, Aminata. Just to be mindful of time and a few questions that have come in, this meeting is being recorded. So, you know, you'll all have access to that as well. Um, but yeah, one of the first questions that came through was how to join. And I do really want to walk through that just to make sure everyone is aware of that process. Um, so if we could move on to that slide. Um, it's a very simple process. It's really just these three steps. Um, the first step is to review the application guidelines. And on this slide, there's a link to uh, the application itself for you to review. Uh, the second step would be to prepare a letter of commitment which is signed by the highest level executive of your organization and addressed to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Of course, we have templates available in different languages online on our website so that it's easy for you to complete. And the last step of all is to complete the online application form. And this really just includes uh, different questions of basic information of your company, as well as uploading a scanned version of that letter of commitment you would have um, already completed and other documents such as government registration for your organization, um, et cetera. So please feel free to review that. And if you have any more detailed questions, I'm happy to stay on as well and answer those. Typically we advise it will take seven to 14 days to process an application as it goes through uh, some brief due diligence screening. Um, and otherwise there are very few exclusionary criteria. We are, are really an all encompassing organization. However, any organization that derives revenue from tobacco production or any land, mine, or cluster bombs are excluded from participating in the UN Global Compact. That's, that's the brief of joining. I did see as well another question um, on any requirements. If I've understood it correctly, we have two main requirements of participation. One being one that my colleague Tumi has spoken about at length, which is the communication on progress. And that is an annual requirement via our digital platform. So we do require that uh, from business organizations on an annual basis. And additionally, we do have annual contribution amounts that are required as well on an annual uh, basis. And that really depends on your organization's revenue. So specifically for those of smaller revenues and SMEs, um, those, it all really is broken down by your revenue. So Tumi can advise further on, on what the local fees are, but um, otherwise we are trying to build out more material to uh, cater to SMEs and smaller organizations to ensure they're also capitalizing on all the material that we have. Um, um, I wanna quickly add something to the revenue part. So currently our team, digital team, a calculator, a revenue calculator, I mean, and a revenue calculator. Right? So when you go on our platform, you will be able to 
plug in your annual revenue and it will exactly give you the amount of uh, annual contribution that you will pay. But for smaller companies, as Anna mentioned, Tumi will be able to advise you more on that. If you are under 50, if your company is under 50 million, you will not be required to be global fee, but you will be required to be to pay some local fee for um, participation. So that's what I wanted to add for the revenue part. Thank you. And just to jump on that um, conversation, we'll be dropping the link to the um, to the calculator very soon, shortly in the chat box. But I just wanted to mention that post this call, we'll be sharing um, more details on how to join and then the breakdown of the fees um, that are required. When Aminata was referencing 15 million, it's actually $15 million. Um, and that's your based down on the revenue, but there's a breakdown that will be shared after this call that details how to participate um, and the fees that um, are required for, for um, organizations. I do have a couple of questions as well that I wanted to address. Um, so just quickly scanning through the chat box. Uh, I think I have a question that came to me directly. Okay, so beyond organizations applying for, so I think this person has actually um, knows more about our opportunities. So the person says, beyond, beyond organizations applying for the Climate Ambition Accelerator, can individuals be a part of it? Um, unfortunately, no. Um, only organizations can be participants of the UN Global Compact, which do not offer individual memberships. Um, or participation. So this is an organizational based participation um, for the UN Global Compact. Um, the Climate Ambition Accelerator is um, one of our accelerator programs running for about six to seven months, um, basically training organizations on um, achieving net zero standards, making sure they're setting science-based targets and also how to reduce um, GHG emissions, how to measure, how to reduce and how to track. And this uh, program would um, end towards um, COP28 um, holding in Dubai. So we then have companies that, are, if companies are signed up to the science-based targets initiative, um, they will very much likely get the opportunity to be at COP28. Um, so those are just one of the opportunities. At the end of this program as well, we'll be sending you an email with a breakdown of um, all the opportunities that we've shared, the accelerator uh, events, the global events, our local events, um, our resources that you can engage in. Let me just run through and see if we have any more questions so that we make sure we are not missing um, any. Um, very quickly. Me, I just want to mention something quickly. I think some of the people are asking for your email, but we can let them know that we will send a follow up email like to all of them. Maybe they can get the email through that. Yes, okay. So I'm just going to put in the um, email that you can contact, but we'll actually, we will also reach out to you uh, with a follow up email. And then if you're interested to proceed with the conversation, we can continue um, from there. I think if there just checking, is there any other questions? <clears throat> any other questions? Okay, if maybe you put your question on the chat, but we miss it, please, you can unmute yourself and then ask it here again. Thank you. Okay, so we have a question here that says, um, what benefit is the organization providing organizations that have their own roadmap? Um, I want to assume that this is speaking to a sustainability roadmap. What we offer is how to achieve that roadmap. You may have gone a step further to develop or design um, the roadmap, but you need support of how to achieve it. You need technical capacity building. We are able to offer that. You need to connect with um, organizations that are well advanced um, in uh, that order might have already achieved some elements of that room. We can make that connection, right? Um, 
it, it, it from our events, you're able to engage with industry pairs, um, experts in that particular field because, and if your organization is an expert, we also want to share your success story. But the truth about it is there is no one company that is an expert in all sustainability issues. If you look at the sustainable development goals, they are 17 in number. There is no one company that is 100% perfect when it comes to the 17 um, sustainable development goals. Our alcohol areas are um, labor, human rights, environment, and anti-corruption. There is no one company that is an expert in all these four areas. So whichever area it is that you need support in, we are able to offer that support. And whichever area that you are an expert in, we also want you to engage with companies and share that success story and inspire other organizations on how to um, progress, um, accelerate sustainability and progress the work when it comes to sustainability. I hope that um, answers your question. Any other questions, um, please? And, sorry, Tumi, I just wanted to add to the amazing point you've made um, by saying also our communication on progress is not something we've created entirely ourselves. It actually is based off of a lot of existing um, guidelines and um, already existing reporting frameworks. But really what we offer is a public platform for you to be able to report that and showcase all the amazing work on your sustainability that you're doing. And as Tumi kindly mentioned, investors, stakeholders, this is a really good opportunity for you to be able to monitor, benchmark your progress. Even if you are in a more advanced category, you're able to benchmark that across the data of other companies in other countries, in region, in sector. So it really is an opportunity for you to be able to track your progress, um, even if it is in that more advanced category and do that publicly to really showcase the work that you're doing. And, and just to write on that, on that um, comment as well, the other um, guidelines that we are aligned with is um, OECD, um, SASB and GRI. So if you're able to, once you complete our communication of progress, you've aligned with all these other guidelines. So as against having to align to OECD, mm -hmm. then do another reporting for SASB or do another reporting for GRI. But these are a bit technical terms that I know that only organizations that are really um, engaged in sustainability reporting will know. But if there's anyone on this call here, as, uh, the UN Global Compact um, communication of progress aligns with all this um, three guidelines or reporting frameworks that I've referenced, the OECD, um, the SASB, and the GRI. And to kind of note as well, I think someone just had a question about whether this is a monitoring and evaluation. We actually do not, as to mentioned, we are not watchdogs. We really are almost guide dogs and really want to guide you in the right direction. So we do not um, rank, uh, evaluate, uh, monitor we there is a lot of trust in the transparency and and public nature of the platform so it really is a, you know a matter for you to be able to communicate and report that progress there's no checks that we we put in place because it is uh, very public so it is the hope that if if not just your stakeholders but really the general public can see and kind of attest to that information um we really just support you along that journey and, and guide you to those right resources to be able to progress and really along your sustainability journey, but we do not evaluate that progress at all. I hope that answers the question. Okay, so no, no questions, but I, I see a comment here from, um, one of our participants saying, thank you, the UN just team, we have unfinished business. Hopefully we can close out on this too. So we, we look forward to closing this out soon. Um, and um, well, maybe not finish the business, but start off on a different level and on a new part of having you as a participant of the UN Global Compact. Okay. So, so be, oh, sorry, to me, you can go ahead. Yes, please. I see another question. How do we leverage all the tools and support structure you have at UNGC? Um, I like to say that the tools and support are quite vast. They are um, non-exhaustive. The starting point when an organization becomes a participant is we take you through a journey of identifying um, areas where you have an outsized effect. 
So for example, if we take a manufacturing company who is um, producing lubricants, or let's even say a company that is manufacturing plastic, let's make it as basic as possible, manufacturing plastic. It, that company will have an outsized effect on the environment when it comes to um, waste management of the plastic materials. It would also have an outsized effect on it's how it's getting its raw materials to produce um, the plastics, right? Maybe buckets or chairs or whatever. Um, it would also have an outsized effect on its environment because I can imagine that they will have very heavy duty machinery running um, to produce these plastics. So we take such an organization on a journey on identifying what are the areas that I really need to focus on at this time. Because truth be told, you can't focus on everything um, at every time. And like Ugochi said, starting off, there are areas that you need to identify that um, this is what I should target to address. And you might address it for the next couple of years. And when you feel that you are comfortable with this, you've achieved this, just like Ugochi said, they now feel comfortable and they're at another level of looking at areas where they need to address when it comes to sustainability. You then transition from that area to um, another sustainability issue. So for example, the plastic manufacturing company, today it might be, um, it might be waste management. Are they recycling? Are they making sure that the kind of plastics they are making are recyclable so that they are not taking many more resources from the environment that is already depleted? Um, it's also as intricate as if they're able to recycle the plastics, they will not need to spend as much um, in buying many more raw materials or pellets that they will melt and use to produce the plastic, right? Which is also a business sense because they'll be saving money in the long run. So if they address that issue for say the next three years, they might then move on to how are they um, addressing power generation? Are they currently running diesel power generators? or do they want to then transition to gas powered or solar panels, right? So the journey keeps evolving and it keeps moving and then you're able to address issues. As against manufacturing, it might also be a gender issue in your organization today. Are you empowering women? Are you making sure that there's um, diversity and inclusion in your organization? What is the quota that has been allocated to um, making sure you get women into the organization because that is one of the sustainable development goals, exactly goal five. So how are you achieving this? If you don't know how, we, are, we can then help you. We do have a program that addresses it or where to start from and how to progress and how to um, make sure that the journey is wholesome and there are results at the end of the day, results that you can track to say in 20, 2019, we 5% of our workforce were solely women. But as of today, 2023, we then have 40% um, um, now women. But how do you then go through that journey? That is what we're able to um, help. So that's, I usually recommend, that's the starting point in identifying what it is you want to focus on per time and then scale up that journey going forward. And then you can move on to other issues that your business um, might be having an outside outsized, um effects on. So um, I think there's another question here as well from Muhammad saying um, how uh, the UNGC supports local led organizations that are start that start the engagement into um, and the SDG. Okay. So I, I, I think that sort of relates to the response of giving. Um, there's the, the benchmarking tools, um, very much preliminary tools that you can make use of to address what it is your business does and then what it is that you need to implement at that starting, at that start off point and then how you can progress. Um, another question. Um, okay, so I think it's the same, it's the same um, person. What tools are available to members who have funding requirements? I'm not, I'm not um, very, if you want to expatriate on that um, question, please, you can please expatriate Toby. Um, but when it comes to accessing um, um, SDG bonds or SDG funding, we do have reports and guidelines of what you need to put in place to be able to attract that kind of funding to your organization. Um, that's I hope that that answers the question or that is what you intended to 
to us, but we do have um, guidelines, a lot of guidelines. We do have tools. The academy that I mentioned is a very wholesome tool, on-demand sessions that you can take on what it is that you need to put in place in your organization to be able to attract um, funding or as well, um, um, beyond just attracting funding, if you're looking to, um, um, if you're looking to engage a particular financial institution, just like Gucci said, there are areas that they're looking, um, that they're going to check or going to assess when it comes to ESG requirements, sustainability requirements. So you might be waste management, she mentioned waste management, she mentioned gender, she mentioned um, source of power. Um, so all those areas are very much um, embedded in our academy that you can learn from at every um, step that you are beginner level, mid-level or advanced stage, um, you'll be able to make most use of those resources. Okay, so I think we've been able to cover um, a lot more of the, quite a number of questions that we had. If there are no further questions, any further questions, just to mention again that we will be sending um, a follow-up email that would have the recording, would have um, a snapshot of all the um, benefits, um, our accelerators, the trainings, our events, global events, local events. We also have the United Nations General Assembly coming up in September, um, COP28 in Dubai. Um, um, and a lot of local events as well planned up, planned from for the next half of the year. Um, so I think if there are no other questions, we'll also be sending a guideline on how to progress with registration. And if you have any questions, you can follow up with the email, you would definitely um, be responded to. So um, I think if that is all we can, we can, uh, Call it a day. Thank you very much for your time. I'll hand it over to Aminata to give her um, last comments, then to Anna, and then we'll close. Thank you so much for joining us for this amazing open houses. And then we hope that you learned so much from us today. It has been a very interactive. And thank you for all your questions. You can feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, when you go on, as you can see here, you have our uh, website. When you go there, you will be able to see whoever is um, responsible of us. And then you can directly email us. If you want to learn more, we can have a one-on-one -on -one call again. Uh, you can either have a one-on-one -on -one call with Tumi directly, or you can reach out to us. We can talk more about wh whatever question you have, which area you want to focus on. If you're ready to join, how do you... If you have any more questions, as I can like I, I can say. And to me also mention we will send all of you a follow-up email and we can take the conversation from there. Thank you. We really appreciate you joining us today and have a wonderful day. I will pass it to Anna. Yeah, just echoing, it's really a pleasure to have you all. Thank you so much for your time. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions on any of these processes. We're always here to help and support. Great, and I think I'll round off here to say thank you for your time. We do appreciate you. Um, we're going to send all the resources and please do engage if you have any questions. Like Anna said, we are here to support you. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy your afternoon. Bye everyone. <laughs>